Hello class, I'm going to make a video tutorial on the sharpener. Um, it will not be complete, but it will cover most of the modeling for the sharpener. So let's start from the very beginning. First, file, project window to create our new project if you have not yet. I'm going to click on new and name it my last name, underscore first initial, underscore sharpener. I will choose where to save it. This is going to um, be uploaded to um, Google Drive, right? So I'm just going to put it on the desktop for now and always upload it when I'm done working on it. I'll hit accept. When it's done, it will exist on your, um, it'll look like this, right? If it does not look like this and you can't find it, that means you need to locate it and do this again. Do not move forward until you have this file accessible. If you've done that correctly and you go to file, save scene as, you should see up here that it's trying to save it inside of your folder in the scenes folder. That means the project is set correctly. If it is not there, go to file, set project, navigate to where your project is, select it and hit set. Then you should be to go, good to go. Next, download the reference images for um, for this assignment. Go to our Canvas page, go to Modules, go to Week 3, click on Modeling High Poly Pencil Sharpener. Uh, let me publish this real quick. Download these images. Once they've been downloaded, open up the zip folder and drag out the um, unzip this pencil sharpener ref folder. I'm just going to drag it onto my desktop. And once that's done, we want to go to the source images of our project folder and put that folder in there. Then we can proceed. And here we want to set up our image planes. I'm going to hit spacebar and go to this front Z camera. You can either, um, where is it? You can click on this icon right here. This is image plane, or you can go to view. Uh, image plane import image it should bring you right to source images where you've placed that folder open this up go to otho it's supposed to say ortho um, so i could rename that i'm going to click on front and hit open next go to this side um, minus x go to view image plane import image ortho let's do um, which one did we end up doing last time Let's do, I can't remember left or right. Let's just do left uh, and hit open. And here in this view, we want these to be relatively the same size. What I mean by that is the top of the pencil sharpener here and the bottom of the front should be about the same height as it is here. And these are already, if you chose these two images, they're already scaled correctly. Uh, I think I fooled around in class differently. Um, but that's fine. So I'm going to select one of these, go to attribute editor, make sure it's looking through camera is checked and then type in 0.5 and hit enter. Then I'll select the other one looking through camera, alpha gain 0.5 and enter. Then I can select both of these over here. If I hit spacebar, you should see that they show up here as well. With them both selected, I can click on this icon here which creates a new layer and assigns the objects that are selected. We can double click on this layer, name it ref. Um, we can change this to reference and hit save. And if you've done that, you'll see that you can't select these objects or the image planes in here anymore, right? Um, I could select them over here, but not in here. Um, and nothing is visible here. All right, we can check this box. Let's see how it says T and R and nothing. If nothing is in this box, then we can select it. If T stands for template and R stands for reference. All right, we can also click on this V for visibility to toggle these on and off. Let's move into modeling the front plate. I'm going to hit spacebar so I can maximize this. Then I'll come over here and click on this dual pane. And I should have the uh, perspective camera over here and this camera, um, the orthographic camera over or, uh, front camera over here and actually before I continue I'm going to click back on this 
icon right here to get the four up view, select both of these, hit W, and I'm gonna move these so that the base here is, see how it's just above the grid? That will make this a little bit easier. Uh, all right, then I'll deselect and go back to my uh, double pane here. I'll hit F and F to kind of just center everything. Um, good. Then I'll create a cube. And in this view, I'm going to press four to go to wireframe mode. This view, I'll leave it here. Remember four and five will switch from wireframe, um, right? To shaded, four, five, four, five. All right, with four selected, uh, I'm gonna move this over here so that these this bottom edge lines up with the bottom edge of this front plate, which is the first thing we're modeling, just like we did in class. I'll go to vertex mode, click out here, and select both of these. Notice that it's selected all four verts. Then I'll move this up to this height. See that, right, this is sort of the height where um, the top of the sharpener is without this bump. All right, um, I'm gonna take this whole piece. Looks like I need to center it a little bit better, something like that. Then I'll go back to vert whoops, vertex mode and select all of these verts or you could come over here and grab this face. Either way, either will do the same thing. Um, we could also just take this whole thing, press R and scale it outward like this, which works. Um, so we'll just do that. Then Control Shift X for the multi-cut tool, right? I could cl click over here as well. Hold Control and middle mouse click um, to drop it right in the center. You could also hold Control and then Shift and it will snap it to 10 degree, 10% uh, increments. So then we just want it right in the center. Then I'm gonna hit Q to go back to my selection tool, go to vertex mode, select both of these verts, hit W and bring them down so they rest on top of the plate. I'll do the same thing over here, like this. Uh, and actually I'll hit R to scale this in. And remember that every image has every photo has perspective so it's not going to be perfect so just get it as best as you can next i'll hit go back to my multi-cut tool and i'm going to drop an edge loop somewhere around here and then i'm going to drop another edge loop so that this vertex lines up in the middle of the hole roughly like that uh, then i'll go ahead and select these verts you can see i've got these hit r and to scale them out and same thing with these. Uh, then I will drop one in the middle here and here. Then I'll select these verts and move them up and these ones and move them down. Over here, I can go to face mode, select all of these faces here. I did that quickly by selecting one face, holding shift and double clicking on another, the one next to it, then press delete. I want just the front faces, so I can select these and hit delete to get rid of them. And now I'm left with just this. Um, <laughs> Over here, I'm gonna press four again, double click on this edge here and I'm going to bevel it by clicking on this icon up here, which will split it. I will add a single segment and I'm going to increase the fraction until this edge and this edge are about the same width as this bump up here. So fraction, turn that up. That's good. Um, let's also take these verts and hit R to scale them out. Then I'm gonna take this vertex, I'll hit Q just so you can see this one. Then I'm going to go to, make sure you're in the modeling drop down menu. Then I'll go to edit mesh and uh, chamfer vertices right here. I'll select all four of these, right? Then go to edit mesh, circularize. Um, if, see how mine's twisted? If I want to, I can, um, turn this just so it's, see here it's um, kind of going straight up and down now. So I twisted that a little bit and then add a division. I'm gonna add one division. That's good. 
Then I'm going to face mode, select this face in here and delete it. Um, I can take all of these and scale them up and maybe move this up. I want this to be somewhat bigger than the hole and it needs to stay in the center. So don't move it side to side like this. Just keep it right in the center where it is. Next, we have some end gons. Let's go ahead and fix those. So I'm gonna go to my multi-cut tool and I'm gonna click on this vertex and then click on this edge up here and right click to finish it. Then I'll click on this vertex, come over here kind of in the middle and right click. And I'll do the same for this over here. We could mirror this, but we'll just and like do one side of mirror. Um, but there's a lot of issues that can come up with mirroring, especially if you didn't quite do this correctly or follow along correctly. So instead, we'll just do it manually like this for now, and we'll cover mirroring more in depth during class. All right, so I've cleaned up the end gons and your edges, whoops, I'm gonna select these and just kind of spread them out a little like, just to make it look better. Um, I'll take these and pull this out too. This isn't hyper important. It's just going to make it look a little bit better. Um, cool. Then I'm going to take these edges or these face uh, verts here, hit R, pull them out and down. You could work with the symmetry tool, which was covered in the previous like chess piece videos. Um, I find that tool to often like break, uh, so I don't really use it. I'm going to scale these out. I'm going to take both of these and scale them out a little bit. Uh, I'll take both of these and scale them out some. We don't need to get this perfect, um, but close would be good. And once we um, so I'm just hitting R. Once we get the uh, get them relatively close, when we smooth it, it will look really good. So again, I'm just hitting R to go to the scale tool, then scaling them out in the width, and then hitting W to move them up and down, right? And I'm making sure I'm grabbing both sides at the same time. If you don't do that, then you would need to mirror this over. All right, so this looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and um, we want there to be... Um, an edge flow here. So I'm going to go to edge mode, select these edges, hit control E to extrude. And then where it says offset, I'm going to scale, I'm gonna click on this and give it a positive value. So something like 0.2 for me works, something like this. This will make it so it subdivides nicely. Um, once I've, at this point, I'm going to select the whole thing in object mode, right? Object mode and hit control E and give it some thickness. And we can go to our four up display by clicking over here and spacebar. I'm going to select this and move it to where the front is, right? Like this. And this will allow me to better understand how thick this should be. So I can always um, center the pivot like this and then scale this to be a thickness that I like. So again, we have perspective, which is why this kind of curves in up here and down here. So I'm relying more on just generally the front uh, and the back in the middle to understand the thickness. I'll hit spacebar again and come over here and let's all right, let's grab uh, this view and then I want these four faces, control E to extrude, W, right, to move them up, and then I'm pressing R, and I will scale them in this way. Then I'm going to take this edge and this edge and kind of scale them in and move them up. And actually, I'm going to select all of these And all of these, press R and flatten them out. And then uh, I flatten them by pressing R, right? And then pulling this handle down. Oops. Yep. 
and I deselected when I was rewinding. So let's make sure I do that correctly. This is going to bevel eventually, so we don't need to get that perfect. Um, I'll take all of these. You could select the faces again or the verts. Either is fine and just scale this in a little more. Great. Then I'm going to select all of the edges that wrap around this front corner. So make sure I have them all like this and I don't have any others. And then I will bevel that. Um, and give it one segment. These two verts here aren't a huge issue, but I'm going to select them and scale them in so that, and uh, press W and pull them down so that it looks better. Um, that looks good. Then we can come back here and select this edge, or this face loop, and delete it, and select these and you don't have to select them all at the same time like I'm doing. Um, you could just select whatever you want, but basically we just want all of these and deleting them. We could also do something like, um, whoops, we could go to a side view, right? Go to face mode, select everything, hold shift and deselect everything but the back. And that's another way to get them quickly, then hit delete. <clears throat> There's a tiny bit of thickness here. So I'm gonna select this outer edge, hit control E, give it a, oops, yeah, give it a, a negative thickness, something like this. That's good. There's the front piece. Um, let's also take this front edge here, W, pull it out, bevel it to give it a bit of a flat uh, edge there, something like this. And that's good for now. Next, let's do the back piece. So I'm going to select a face here, hold shift, double click to get all the face loops of the thickness, then go to edit mesh, duplicate. Now, if I open this up, you'll see there's two different surfaces here and I want to select just this one. Go to my side view, hit W, center the pivot by clicking here, move this over here and maybe scale this in just a little bit. Um, okay, we're good. All right, so we have this over here. We need to do a couple things. The first is let's take all of these verts up here. Um, whoops. These ones, right? And this is wider in the back. So I'm going to hit R and just scale it up like this. Roughly, you can use your reference image to get that correct, but that should be good. Um, then I'll take the front edge loop and the back one like this, control E to give it some uh, negative thickness like so. Uh, maybe a, a touch more. And then let's give these two corner edge loops that wrap all the way around a bevel and reduce the fraction, something like this. And let's do the same for this piece, edge loop, bevel, reduce the fraction, something small. Uh, then we can go to face mode, select these faces here, same thing, edit mesh, uh, blah, 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 duplicate. And then we have these, um, which I could then hit control E and pull this out to line up with this for the body. I'm gonna hit control one to isolate this and I'm going to delete, whoops, delete these interfaces. I'll also delete these faces and these faces. Then I will go to vertex mode, select just these verts here, hit control one. And these need to also kind of tuck in like that. So I just I'm scaling them just in the X Right, so they get tucked in like so. I wanna make sure that these intersect with this piece. So I'm gonna select all the, you can either just go to edge mode and, whoops, double click on this edge, that works, or grab all the verts and just kind of see, push them in like this. Cool. 
Great. All right, let's do the next part, which is let's create a cube and go to um, either Mesh Smooth or your Modeling Toolkit, Smooth, Divisions, 2. If you've done that correctly, your cube should look like this. I'll go to um, this view and then click on, well, I want, I want um, this view. So I'm going to click over here. And then in this camera, I'm going to go to Panels, Orthographic, Side. And now I'm working with these two views. I'm going to take this and move it over and up. Go to Face Mode, select just this half of the faces, you can see, like that, and delete them. Then I'll select uh, this whole thing in Object Mode and over here. I'm going to turn on wireframe on shaded right here. Click on this direction so that it's yellow. Hold V, middle mouse click and drag over one of these verts here and it will line it up in the center. Then R to scale it up so that it um, matches like the widest part. So it's a little big, let's scale it down a little. I'm using the center scale to start with. And then I can come over here and I want to kind of line up like this. So I'll also scale it this way so that the back lines up there. Then I'm going to go to um, face mode and select these four faces and press B on the keyboard, which is the same as coming over here and turning on soft select, checking this box. So B toggles that on and off. I'm going to hold B click and drag with the left mouse button, left and right. And you can see I can change this. And I want this to be something like this. That's the same as changing this value in here. So see if I um, decrease the brush size, this number goes down. If I increase it, it goes up, right? So I want, again, all four of these selected, the uh, soft select to be something like this. Uh, and then I'm going to pull this down so that it lines up with this, right? Then I can do something like take um, some verts and soft select is still on. Um, maybe scale this down a little bit and push these in. I'll turn soft select off, grab verts and start uh, adjusting them to better match. The image, so something like this. We'll have to do this a couple of times, but we want to be careful again so we don't end up with like a blobby mess, um, which would be no good. Um, let's go back to face mode. Just on this face mode, select these, hit R, hit B to turn soft select on, and just scale this in. A little bit and let's actually have this it's gonna be a little different than the reference but kind of line up with the bottom here as it does with the uh, actual sharpener turn soft select off so just roughly is fine then I'll double click on this edge bevel it, increase the fraction a bit so it kind of lines up with this. So see these two edges kind of meet there, which is what I want, and give it an additional segment. Then I'm going to select these faces here. Oops. Control E to extrude and give it thickness so that it kind of lines up and matches with this edge. And then I can come over here to vertex mode and select those and just kind of finesse this a little, whoops, a little bit. Uh, that's good. Then I'll take these four 
hit Control e to extrude them, W to go to my move tool, pull them down, R, scale tool, scale them flat, W again, move them up so they line up with the bottom here. Um, let's take these verts right here and move them up and we can use our reference image, something like this. Then uh, multi-cut tool, drop an edge loop in here. Um, hit Q to go to your selection tool, go to edge mode, double click on this edge. R to go to your scale tool, flatten it. W, move it so that it lines up with the overall thickness here. We can then take uh, these back verts here, or those two faces, hit W and tuck them in so it matches the um, reference. We take these faces here, control E, extrude them out. Use your other references to determine how wide that should be. Um, then take these, control E, whoops, let's hit W and pull this out. I'm looking over here. Then I could take these uh, top verts and pull them back so they kind of have a slope. I'm gonna hit control one so everything else is hidden and I'm going to um, select double, actually I'm gonna delete the bottom faces because the uh, the player will never see that, and it's also going to help us with our topology. So I'll delete those. Whoops, I had selected too many faces, so I'm going to undo. Um, let's try that again. This time I'll hold tab and just paint faces and delete them. Make sure I didn't delete anything extra. That's good. Then I'll double click on this edge, bevel it, increase the fraction. I'm looking at this gap here and this one. Then I'll drop an edge loop in here. Then I will select these faces, control E to extrude them, give them a positive thickness value, something like this. Delete these two faces here. Go to vertex mode and select just those four, four verts and pull them up so they're kind of tucked into the bottom here, see that? <clears throat> I can press three to see what this is starting to look like when it's smooth. I'll hit control one again. I'm gonna select this entire edge loop here like this and pull this forward so that it slopes and then I will um, select this edge, this edge, hit W, pull it down. Uh, three. I'll take these and kind of push them in. Cool. Let's make the subdividable. If you get three, you can see it gets pretty soft here. Um, so I'm going to press one. Remember, one and three toggles um, smooth preview on and off. So I'll hit one, select both of these faces, delete them, <clears throat> pardon me. Then I'm going to select this edge loop here, hold shift, double click on this one, make sure I have the entire thing. Click on bevel, um, turn chamfer off, then press three, and you can see it's holding, if I specify turn this off, you can see it's holding that form better, which is good, that's what I want. Um, we also want to hold this a little bit better, so I'm going to go to a multi-cut tool and drop an edge loop there and another one here. Let's also drop one in the center by middle mouse clicking. Double click on this, bevel it, which will split it, and then increase the segment so that each edge lines up close with these, like this edge. So I'm going to something like this. 
If I hit three, you'll see it's holding on to that form much better. Let's get rid of, go to face mode. If you have these um, here, let's get, well, let's get rid of this face here and modeling toolkit, target weld, target, make sure that this looks something like that. Um, we could also just target weld it like that. There's an end gone right here and right there. Let's go to our multi-cut tool and drop an edge loop here and then connect to this if you have the same thing. Um, and then here to here. As a reminder to check for end gons, you can select a piece, go to uh, mesh, click on the option box, this white box next to cleanup. Make sure select matching polygons is selected and then choose faces with more than four sides and hit apply. If it deselects the object, that means you're good. You don't have any end, end gons. If it selects faces, that means those are end gons that need to be cleaned up. I'm going to hit control one um, and see how these look when they're subdivided by pressing three. You can see that this doesn't look correct, so we need supporting edge loops along the corner here. Um, so let's hit control one here and I'll double click on this edge loop, hold shift, double click on that one so they're both selected. Right, bevel them, turn chamfer off. Uh, I'll press three and control one, and then I can play with this fraction to kind of figure out what it should look like. I'm gonna have to adjust all of these a little bit, but that might be a little tight, but that's okay. Let's do this piece next. So I'll select both of these, bevel, chamfer off, fraction down. So like this one, control one. Uh, this one will be handled differently. Um, so we need to drop an edge loop like here and here and here. And that's good, but it's probably gonna see how it makes these bumps on the bottom. The reason why is if I hit one, these edges are too close together. So if we Instead, go to edge mode and double click on one of these edges, or not, if you double click, it'll select the whole thing. I'm gonna select one, hold shift, double click here, see how it selects between. I'll hit W, then hold control and shift. And if I hover over here, my mouse says slide, then I'll move this over in this direction. And I'm gonna do the same thing for this one. I'll slide it up. And now if I hit three, you see it got rid of those bumps, or almost, I can, select these and just kind of nudge them down a little bit hit one yeah that's good all right so if three is on here i hit control i see i'm getting like some pinching uh, around here like that so we can fix that um let's see if we drop an edge loop in here yeah that fixed it so again what I did, whoops, was went to my multi-cut tool and dropped an edge loop here, and that solved that problem. Um, if I hit three and Q and let go, you see I'm getting some pinching right here, which is also not good. So let's fix that. I'm gonna go to my multi-cut tool and drop an edge loop right up here. Then we need to do the same thing we did on the bottom so that we don't get, whoops, so that we don't get pinching. We need these uh, to slide uh, slide down like this, like halfway between. And I'll do the same thing over here. Control shift slide, right? Um, it looks like I forgot to slide these, so I'll slide this here. Select this edge, control shift, slide this here. Then if I hit Q, uh, hit three, deselect this, you'll see that there's no more pinching on the surface. Um, if there's any sort of bumps, it's very subtle. So this is closer to what we want. I'll hit control one for this, I'll press three. So that's lining up nicely. This part over here needs to be adjusted so there aren't holes. So let's do that next. 
Um, I'm leaving three on. Well, I'll, um, one actually at first, and then Control One to make it easier to select the verts I want. So I want these vertices, uh, but nothing else. So Control One, three, um, W, move this up a little bit, and then I want just these corner verts, like. If I select the snake control one, go to vertex mode. I just want these three here, hold shift and these three there. Control one, move these up, right, to close that. I can hit R and scale these out a little bit just to make sure. Then I can take this vertex and shift these. Let's see what I have. Yeah, just those and scale them out a little and make sure there aren't any holes. Good. Um, let's adjust the shape here a little bit. I'm gonna select all of these and hit W and pull this up a little. I'll select all of these and kind of move them out. And that's starting to look pretty good. I can take all of these, let's see, kind of move them up a bit. Yeah. And let's actually select all of these and move them up. Oh, maybe moving them up wasn't, yeah, let's just leave it like that so we don't create a hole. All right, again, I'm in smooth preview. This is what it looks like. Let's go ahead and create this um, center part. I'm gonna click on this pipe. This isn't in here by default. If you go to create polygon primitives, you'll see um, pipe. If you want it to be on your shelf, you can hold control and shift and click on it and it will appear in the far end of your shelf. And then you can middle mouse click and drag it over here, which is how I got it here. But create polygon primitives um, pipe. rotate it 90 degrees. You can come over here and rotate it 90 or hold J while you're using the rotate tool to step snap it. Um, let's change this to orthographic front. That way we can um, click on this, um, this direction, right? In the X, hold V and vertex snap it by middle mouse clicking and dragging over here um, to line it up exactly in the center. Then, uh, I'm going to hit F over here, attribute editor, at, uh, polypipe one. Uh, okay, so that snaps, which I don't like. So instead, channel box, um, polypipe one right here, thickness, control, shift, middle mouse click, and drag left and right. Then let's... Look over here, we want this to be kind of on the bottom, like it is in the actual pencil sharpener. Control one, face mode, select these back faces, delete them, because the viewer will never see them. I can select these, and we don't want to make this crazy, but we could push this further back so it's less likely the player will see like an empty void in here. So something like that is good. Uh, next, let's go to graphic side and we want to make this piece so I'm going to make a cylinder rotate it 90 degrees right 90 degrees W um, move it over here to line up uh, and scale it so that it matches the height somewhat we'll have to play with this a little bit um, but yeah and then push it in Control one over here, F to focus, face mode, hold tab, paint these faces, delete them. Uh, control one again. Now let's get this entire piece in object mode to line up correctly. We don't want this to stick out like this. Um, so I'm gonna move this over and I may just wanna scale this down a touch. Um, I'm gonna hit W, turn on wireframe on shaded grab this X, translate X handle, hold V, vertex snap it to the center. So now I know it's perfectly lined up and I can scale it down a touch. 
Um, let's take this edge here, bevel it, decrease this, give it one segment. That's good. Uh, let's create a, another cylinder, rotate it uh, boom, boom, 90 degrees, uh, move this up here to where this handle is going to be. Take these verts, scale them up like this, come over here, grab this edge here, um, bevel it, turn chamfer off, then select this and bevel it, add a segment. We're going to smooth this later, so it doesn't matter. Then go to face mode, select these faces, control E to extrude. Whoops pull this in like this, then select these, bevel, give it a segment or two. Then we need to get this curving a little bit. So uh, maybe I'll take this edge loop here, hit W, then hold control and shift to slide and bring this down, then R to scale it and scale it up a little like this, right? Maybe oversize it and then bevel it increase the fraction and give a segment or two, something like this. Take this whole thing and let's scale it um, down in this, using this box right here and the Y and the X at the same time. Then double click here, bevel it, reduce the fraction, uh, give it a segment then that's looking pretty good. Let's go to object mode, select this, uh, select the X arrow, hold V and vertex snap it to, well, middle mouse and click right over top of a center vert uh, like this one, and it should line it up perfectly. All right, let's create, um, I guess another cylinder, rotate it 90 degrees. Um, move it up to line up. I'm going to look at the base of this. It also looks like this cylinder here is too large. So I'm going to take these verts and bring this in like this. Then this looks pretty good. <clears throat> Let's get the thickness correct. So something like this F over here. Let's select here, hold V, vertex snap it so it lines up in the exact center. Um, let's scale this up a little. Then I'm going to go to face mode and select these faces. And I'll go to edit, uh, let's see, edit mesh, extract, which will separate them, right? So now this is its own piece, which I can then move up to line up here. This should also be um, smaller in this direction. Or let's just scale the whole thing down. No, let's scale it using this axis. So the box in between the Y and the X, right? So something like this. Uh, let's take this piece and just move it out so it lines up better. Remember there's perspective in here, which is why it's not lining up exactly correct, but that's okay. Um, now that we've done that, we can take this piece and this piece, go mesh, combine, then double click on the border edge here, hold shift, double click on that one, bridge across like so. Um, select this in object mode, control one, double click on this edge loop, hold shift, double click on this edge loop, um, bevel, reduce the fraction. Then let's um, select these edge loops and bevel chamfer off. Then if I hit three, this is, and I turn this off, this is what I get, which I kind of like, uh, but you could use the, this is probably isn't correct, but <laughs> you can use the, it's probably just actually rounded. Let's make it rounded. So I'm gonna undo that. 
Let's un, uh, hit one. Let's see. All right, let's try just beveling, reducing the fraction, adding a segment. There we go. It's, yeah, that's probably better. Control one. Let's make sure this, so if I hit three on this, you can see it kind of collapses in there, which we don't want. So I'm going to go to edge mode, double click on this edge, bevel, chamfer off, fraction down. Now, if I hit three and click off, you can see it's holding that form. Um, that's good. Let's three. I'm just going to hit three on all of these. Uh, so I can see this needs to be, both of these can be pushed back. Um, because ultimately we are going to smooth these, right? And whenever you smooth something, it loses volume, which means it's going to shrink a little bit and things may not line up anymore, which is why we've been playing with one and three a lot. Let's make sure this is subdividable, which it, if I press three, you'll see it kind of collapses in. So we can add quick supporting edge loops by clicking on these edge loops, bevel, chamfer off, see how it added an edge loop on either side. That's what we've been doing this whole time. We can control how tight that edge, those edges are with the fraction, uh, but the default's probably fine. Uh, but if I select this and press three, you can see it's subdivides cleanly. So control one. Um, yeah, and this is essentially what we're looking for, right? Like all pieces are represented. If we wanted to, we could create like a dome in here, um, like a rivet, because that's uh, there's a there's one through here that allows us to turn. We could also just texture that on, but that's something else you could do. Uh, there are also holes in here, two on each side um, for screws. You don't need to actually put a hole in this piece down here, but you could create the screw heads. Um, yeah, so there's areas where it could be improved. Um, but yeah, if you get this far, you'll be you'll be set. Um, lastly, just before you submit this, check for end gons and let's do some cleanup real quick. So I'm gonna select all pieces, uh, mesh, uh, clean up, right, option box, there, option box, there are no end gons, that's good. Uh, let's delete our history, edit, delete all by type, history, and then we should name all these pieces. Um, these pieces are nested because they were duplicated. Let's select one, middle mouse click on it in the outliner and drag it out like that. See how you can middle mouse click and drag things? Then we'll open this up, open this up, select both of these by holding shift and clicking, middle mouse click and drag out. Then edit, delete all by type, history, then once you've done that, you can delete this group and it's good. Then these should all be named. Um, so I'll just go through this. I would name uh, uh, back frame. This could be body. This one could be front plate. So I'm going to name this back plate just for back plate, front plate. Uh, this one could be um, uh, uh, let's call it body uh, back body. This is um, boop, boop, whoops, not X. Uh, this can be mm, I'll just name it tube um, back body. So, um, handle, or actually I'll just name this handle support. This is the part I've struggled with the most this video. This can just be the handle, not hand. Handle, no. <laughs> handle, uh, this can be the arm. And for my own sanity, maybe I would arrange these in an order that makes more sense. Um, so I could take Let's see, front plate, middle mouse click and drag this up above here. Body, I can go here. Back plate, back body, tube, handles. Tube can go up by front plate. Handle support, that's good. And then arm, I'll put this up here. Then I'll select all of them and hit Control G to group them. And I'll name this Sharpener. Um, again, that was select all pieces and hit control G. Um, yeah. And let's see, I can press three here 
And at this stage, I think I, yeah, at this stage, you're good to submit. Um, no Angons, everything's organized, history's deleted, everything's named. Um, all right, thanks, good luck.